Hey guys, Robert here doing a quick video for pvrepair.ca. Today I'm going to do a quick one on paint. I get asked this a lot, so I thought I'd touch on it. Uh, I'm only going to do a really quick summary of it. There's a lot of other websites and videos that will show you more specifics about it, but if you have a question, feel free to shoot after this, and I'll see if I can answer it for you. So basically, paints come in a lot of different qualities. Uh, everywhere from your bottom of the barrel paint right up to tournament level high-end paint. And the differences between them usually have to do with the outside shell and the fill. So with your cheaper paints, you're going to get a really hard shell that's going to tend to bounce on you when you're shooting other players. Not only that, it's going to have a tendency to sting as well when you hit the other players. That's because the shell's thicker. Usually the gelatin is just thicker when they put it through the machine. That way they can put them out a little quicker, so they make it a little thicker. Now the fill on it, on the other hand, is going to be runnier or thinner. It's easier to wipe off. Potentially it's loaded down with dyes, which means it could stain easier. It's just, you get what you pay for. The cheaper it is, the less time they try to put into it, the faster they try to put the paint balls out. Perfect example of bottom end paint, right here. Just orange paintball, uh, kind of egg shaped. The ridge where the two halves came together, very prominent, full of dimples, raw card shell. Typically this is the kind of paint that you're gonna get with a blis uh, blister pack gun if they come with the tubes. I see one on the market right now. It's kind of a pump style handgun, comes with five tubes of paint in it. This is basically what they're giving you. They're almost marbles, basically. I don't recommend them for playing against other people. They're fine for testing equipment and things like that. They still do their job. Uh, the other thing that I might note on them is they tend to have a little bigger bore size, so the, the paintball itself is actually bigger than uh, your higher end paint. Now, when you move up from the bottom end paint, such as this, you're gonna get into mid-level paint, or uh, something around that level. And when I say mid-level, I'm crudely classifying these myself. Uh, most people that have played for any amount of time will kind of throw them in the same classes, but everybody has their personal preferences. So, I mean, I, I do recommend going out and making your own opinions on this as well. Now, moving on to mid-grade paint, you're going to get something along these lines. Uh, this is a, a multicolored shell, red and orange. The colors really don't matter a whole lot in the shell nor the fill color. But the first thing you can tell when you pick this up is the paintball itself has a thinner shell on it. It just feels a bit more brittle in the hands. Um, the fill inside's a little thicker, it won't run off, can't wipe off as easy, won't stain as easy. Uh, they're slightly more round, though still pretty oblobbed and stuff like that. It's just the next step up. Still gonna get dimpling, the ridge still fairly prominent. But it, it's a better paint for your money, and you're not going to get into spending a whole lot more money when you move up to a mid-grade paint either. So uh, if you're going to start playing paintball, this is a good place to start as your mid-grades. They don't sting as much. They'll give you better accuracy, more air consistency, and such on like that. Now, from your mid-level, this uh, this isn't tournament-level paint, but I am going to call this the, the upper level because for around here, this is probably what you're going to find for the upper level unless somebody's bringing paint in or there's a tournament being hosted where the paint's being provided by a paint company that's actually supplying their premium paint. Now, with the premium paint, uh, once again, this is a multicolor shell, not a big deal, but uh, the, the whip edge... It's completely gone. It's nice and smooth all the way around. No dimples. Very, very brittle shell. Breaks very easy. Very thick fill in it. Can't wipe it off easy. Um, it also, uh, I don't know if this stuff has it, but some of the other higher end paints, they'll have like uh, metal flaking in it. That way when the light hits it, it'll reflect. It's just easier to see. Um, now, another big question that I get asked a lot off around here is what's the best bang for my buck? Now your best bang for your buck when it comes to paint locally here in Nova Scotia that I've found, and this is conjunction with talking to other people that have been to paintball for a while, some field owners and stuff like that, the consensus has been this paint. This paint here, it's very inexpensive for what you're getting. It's about $20 a case for a thousand, and it's called Cryptic. Cryptic comes in a green box and it has skulls on it. The paintballs are always blue on blue, the fill is blue. But uh, with this, you're getting a really good paint for the general home user. 
Uh, it does have a little bit of a whip, but hardly noticeable. It doesn't affect the trajectory of the ball much. Uh, the fill is nice and thick, it's bright, it stands out good. Uh, the shell is a little thicker, but not too thick. So it's not going to break easy, as, the, as easy as the higher end paint, but it's definitely not going to have that really bad sting and bounce that the really low end paint would have. So if you're in Nova Scotia and maybe some of the other provinces, I'm not 100% sure, but I know here in Nova Scotia, Cryptic, great way to go, especially if you're just getting into paintball. Uh, you just want a nice, inexpensive paint that you can pick up and play out in the backyard. Great paint right there. Um, the last thing I want to touch on before I finish this video off, because it has been mentioned to me a few times and people have asked questions, is this right here. It's not really a paint, but it's still a projectile from a paintball gun. And these are reballs. Reballs are kind of a foam rubber and they are meant to be reused. Now, reballs typically get used in indoor play. That way you don't have the paint and stuff to clean up. Uh, these you can just kind of sweep up, put back in a bin, dump them back in more guns, and away you go. So these here are meant to be used for indoor play or testing guns. If you use them outside, you're gonna shoot them, you're gonna lose them. The big thing to know with these are if you are planning on using reballs indoors uh, at a field, Make sure your gun is chronoed down. Most places won't let you shoot over 230 feet a second if you're using a reball just because they are foam rubber. When they hit you, they're going to sting. So they're trying to lower the velocity. Most indoor places, you're only shooting maybe the length of a basketball court at maximum. And it, it's just a safer way of doing it. The other thing with them is if you pick up some for your own home use and you're using them in your house, you want to crank down your gun again. That way you're not getting ricochets and breaking all your stuff and things. If you look online, you can find great tutorials on how to make catch nets for reballs. That way, if you do want to play with them in the house, you can shoot them. The net will stop, uh, absorb the force, and bring them back down into something that collects them. Uh, that's basically all I'm going to touch on with these. It's very quick, just to give you a little bit of information on your paint. If you have any questions or I miss something, please feel free to contact me and I'll try and get to it as quick as I can. Also check out pbrepair.ca for other informative videos and some write-ups. Alright guys, we'll talk to you next time.